see people here, guests. It's, it's very, very exciting. Thank you all for being here. Why do a chair? Oh, I was probably looking at the computer earlier. You know, there's seats up front. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. First and foremost, thank you all for being here. For those that have never been here before, um, thank you. Okay, I mean, really, really, there's a lot of information that we can go through. Um, in these half an hour workshops, we spent 30 minutes of, of time. I go through a lot of information, and in going through that information, I want to make sure that you're getting some information that you can use. Um, that's, that's, the, that's the whole concept behind doing these, doing these workshops. Because education, you could come get adjusted, which is an important part, part of what you do. And you know, if you have aches and pains, obviously we address those things. But we're more concerned with how you're healing and how your body is responding to things and how your body is actually doing the things that it's supposed to do. Because sometimes some things that we do for our bodies are good for us, but we don't always like to do them. Um, for some people, it's exercise. For some, for some people, for some people, it's you know eating the proper foods. They're like, oh, I don't like that food. But then they realize as they start changing their taste buds that the, they don't like the, the foods that are bad for them. So um, there's a lot that goes along with it. And ultimately, with the chiropractic end of it, and what we look at is we're trying to make sure that you have proper nerve supply. Um, the proper nerve supply is the real, real important aspect of what we do as chiropractors. But having said that, having said that, you here are sitting to find out about heart healthy eating habits. We'll also address some, some habits other than eating, eating healthy that will help with, uh, help with those things. You've probably heard some of this stuff. Okay, how many people have do you know that say, "Oh, I've heard that stuff. I know about it before. I have heard that stuff before." How many people do you know? Come on, give me a raise of hands, right? Okay, and they say these things to you, and do they do the things that they've heard to correct it or to change their habits? They don't. Okay, so it's like it's important. You're laughing. <laughs> I am looking at Tyler, and he's like. No, you know, and it's important to understand that we need to hear these things again and again and again until we finally say, okay, I'm going to make a change. Um, an example of that is a woman that comes in to see me, and she's been seeing me for years, and we've been talking about nutrition for many, many years, and we did a um, we did a cleanse with her. We had her go on a healthy transformation um, packet that we have here through Metagenics, and in the last um, in the last I'd say six or seven months, she's probably lost a good amount of weight, but it's not, it's not just starving herself. She's eating healthier. Her taste buds have changed. Things have changed in her life that has allowed her to be able to do these things, and she's seeing the changes. And she's like, and she was concerned that she was going too far on the other end, you know, because people always say, oh, am I doing too much on the other end? Well, not necessarily, you know, not necessarily. You need, because Eating greens is healthy for you, regardless of whether you like them or not. Drinking water is good for you, regardless of whether you like it or not. Okay, there's no ifs, ands, buts. Those things are good for you, and those are some of the things that we're going to talk. We're going to talk about. So, having said that, why is why why is this such an important subject now? Why do people? What what are some of the risk factors supposedly? For eating, um, you know, for for heart attacks and myocardial infarctions and strokes and things of that nature, throw some of those out there. What are, what are some of the risk factors that people say? Diabetes. Diabetes is a risk factor. But how did uh, how did diabetes start? Is the question. Okay, you know, but diabetes is a risk factor. How about some of the foods and things that they talk about? Anybody have any ideas? What's supposedly a bad food for, for your heart? Bacon, but it's good. Bacon, <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> but it tastes good, right? No, it's not bad for you. <laughs> I, I will talk, we'll talk about, we'll talk about that stuff. But that's, I'm just trying to throw some, because these are some of the things that people have. What else? Anything else? Any, any ideas? Huh? Processed Processed foods, yeah. You know, so, so it's like, it's not like you don't know about this stuff. You know, it's, it's important to understand that. But let's get into the workshop. And again, I thank you, and I want to make sure that you guys get your 30 minutes and, and you're in and out of here. Um, so, as you can see on here, 
It says heart healthy habits. It's not just eating. There's much more to it than eating, but we're going to address those. So one of the first things you can do is control your portion size. Why is that, why is that so important? Well, I mean, I'm going to read through some of this stuff, and I'm, you, can, you can actually read it while it's up there. But how much you eat is an important aspect to what you do. Because who goes, I mean, literally, um, I, I went, where, is, where did I go? Oh, I was down in New York City with, with my mom. I, went, I visited her after a seminar. I stopped and we, we went to eat dinner. And we walked into this diner. And, you know, food is expensive. I'm looking at the menu. I'm like, this is a diner. It's $26 for fish. And I'm saying to myself, this is expensive. But then I saw the size of the plate that they brought out. It could have fed a family of four. Okay? I mean, the, I mean the, the size of the fish, I swear to you, it had to be like 16 ounces of fish. Then it was on top of a mound of rice. And I'm thinking, this is a family dinner. You know, you put it in the middle and everybody just picked from it. Okay, but I mean, it was all good food, but still it was way too much. So you have to be aware of your caloric intake and things of that nature because, and no matter what your diet style and things that, uh, and things that you're doing, you, you can't eat a lot of something and expect to lose weight if you're not looking at the portion size. And that's one of the things that, that happens. People eat a lot of something. So um, how much you eat, uh, is specific to everything that's going on um, and making sure that you have um, have the proper amount of serving sizes the proper you know proper serving of a piece of fish or pasta is about half a cup that's not a lot that's very small okay but you know you go into a restaurant you get these monster sized dishes and what ha one of the problems is that we gorge at specific meals okay and we don't eat throughout the day. We should be eating small portions throughout the day. It actually speeds up your metabolism. It's, it's healthier for your heart. And if you're gorging, your body is really, really having trouble digesting all of those foods. So these are things that, um, that you've looked at. Um, eating more of a low-calorie, nutrient-rich food, such as fruit and vegetables, and less of high-calorie sodium foods, such as refined or processed fast foods, can shape up your diet as well as your heart and waistline. Okay, um, Dr. Jenna being a vegetarian, she brings in this monstrous salad, takes her about an hour to eat it. Okay, that's the way you're supposed to eat. You're supposed to eat over a period of time. How many of us actually sit down and do that? Not most of us don't. Okay, so we go eat the fast foods and it's really bad for our hearts and things of that nature. But also the salad that she's eating um, is probably less calories than going out to a fast food restaurant. I mean, do you ever, uh, one night I went to, I've never, has anybody ever gone to Five Guys? Okay, yeah, I went once. I was like, you know what, I want to see what everybody's talking about. I like burgers, I hate hamburgers. So I ordered uh, a burger, I ordered, I ordered something, and I, it's not like I eat like this all the time, so I ordered a bacon cheeseburger. And I was like, okay, this is my, my day that I'm going to cheat. So I ordered this one bacon cheeseburger, and then I looked up the caloric intake, just of the burger. Over a thousand calories, just in the burger. Okay, then you add all the fat and all the other crap that's in it, and you think to yourself, "Wow, you wonder why it's affecting my heart." And then, and then you look at a salad like I was talking about with Dr. Jenner. I mean, you could literally a thousand calories of greens is probably is probably like a bowl this large. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's and you know what? It will fill you up. I mean, adding a good protein to it or something of that nature is going to be much healthier than doing that. And guess what? You won't eat as many calories because you'll be full before you can finish a bowl of cat salad this large. Okay? So the thing is, you know, if you want to add like a, a three or four, you know, three or four ounces of good prime meat or, or a low-fat meat or something like fish or something of that nature, because what's healthier, a red meat or a fish? Fish. But a wild game? And a grass-fed cow can be just as healthy as eating fish. And a fish that's farm-raised can be just as bad as eating a red meat. So you, it depends on what you're eating. It depends on how it's raised, how it's made, and how, how things are, uh, how things are going, how going on. So controlling portion size is, um, is one of the first things that we have to look at. If you're looking at a piece of meat that's, you know, I had a friend who had hands that were probably twice the size of mine. His, that's, you know, that's like four servings of meat. Okay, yes, you know, and you sit there and you're like, oh, I'm going to eat all this stuff, and then afterwards you're like, oh, I'm 
so tired. Have you ever done that? Mm-hmm. And it's not just turkey. It's not the trip. To <laughs> okay? All right? It's, it, it literally, if the food you're eating is making you that exhausted after you're eating it, it might not be that healthy for you. Or you might, but your body is, is working a lot to, to, it's stressing a lot in order to process that. And if you stress your body, what happens to your body? Cortisol levels go up. Okay, cortisol levels go up. Cortisol levels go up. They raise your blood sugar. They raise your heart rate. They raise your heart rate. They also raise your prothrombin or clotting factor. Guess what? Stroke, high blood pressure. I mean, if you're consistently stressing your body a lot at specific meals, eating a lot of food, it's doing a lot more. So you gotta be careful. So try to eat smaller meals throughout the day. If you go out and you get a Subway and it's a, a 12 inch sandwich, don't eat the whole sandwich. Eat half of it for lunch and eat half during a break or something like that. Because then at least what you're doing is you're breaking it up over a few hours. As a matter of fact, I have a guy that used to come in, and that came in here, he had surgery. Um, but he really, really took to heart, um, took to heart how to eat properly. He used to go into Subway and get two 12 inch, like, loaded with fat and garbage sandwich and eat the whole thing just for lunch. Okay? That's not the way Jared ate when he was playing. <laughs> okay? You got to be really understanding of this. I mean, this is the, I think the key to everything is understanding portion size before anything else. Okay, and then you can talk about the foods. Eat more vegetables and fruits. Who's heard that? Come on. Everybody hears that. Okay? Do you do it? I do food diaries on people, and they say, oh, yeah, I'm eating healthy. I look at their, and they, they are. They're eating fairly healthy. And then I look. There's never a green on it. There's never a salad. There's never no vegetables, no fruits. I'm like, but the other foods are fairly healthy, but there's none of that stuff. Why is it important to have good sources of vegetables and fruits? You can look up there. The answer is up there. <laughs> 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 why is it why why are why are vegetable foods important in our diet? The vitamins, yeah. Huh? The vitamins. The vitamins the is fiber. a big portion. The fiber. Okay, it helps the motility of itself. It actually helps with the with the ability of your body to absorb the food you're eating through your intestinal wall. The fiber that's in it actually stimulates that process, not only stimulating you to be able to have normal bowel movements, but also stimulates the process of your body being able to do that. So those are important. So those are important things to look at. Limit unhealthy fats and cholesterols. On the end of this, um, on the end of this, I have a list of like some good foods, bad foods type things. Good fats, bad fats. Um, the <sighs> saturated fats and trans fats are um, are fats that that really really clog up things. I mean, just think about it. Okay. If you have you have an olive oil. It's in liquid form at room temperature. Okay? You take a saturated fat at room temperature. Is it liquid? Okay. Our bodies, our bodies are about 98.6 degrees. Does a solid saturated fat melt at 98.6? Maybe, but not really. So you're trying to put sludge through your body. It is, that's what it is. You're trying to put sludge with, with a natural, like an olive oil or an avocado oil. And you have to be careful when you cook with them because they have different boiling temperatures. Like olive oil is at about 160, avocado is about 180. So there, it's, a, it's got a higher, it's got a higher, um, it's got a higher cooking temperature, so it cooks differently. And then after they get above those temperatures, you can actually, um, you can actually change, change what's going on. A prime example of, a, um, of changing something into a solidified form is an egg. Okay, you put it in the bowl, you heat it up, and it get the proteins get denatured, and what happens is the egg, the egg becomes solid. Okay, well, in your body, certain fats will do that. Okay, they can heat up and melt, but they can also, if, if it's not, it's going to turn to sludge, and it's not gonna, your blood's not going to move as, move as well. So you've got to be careful of that. The, the unsaturated fats are the ones... Um, they also, we, I talk about this in a more advanced workshop, but 
they also are the ones that don't hook to oxidative phosphor. They don't do oxidative phos phosphorylation. And what happens is they don't cause oxidation in your body. And if there's not a lot of oxidation, guess what? Your body, your body functions better because if you have a lot of oxidation, what ends up happening is your body starts to break down. Okay? So that's why the, and people take antioxidants. And that's where fruits and vegetables come in because there's a lot of antioxidants in fruits and vegetables. So those are the things that, that, we, look, that we look at from that standpoint. Um, <clears throat> low fat protein sources. So this is the thing that I was talking about. I was, has anybody ever seen Food Incorporated, the movie Food Incorporated? You've seen it? Okay. I was, I've seen it. I hadn't seen it for a long time, and I was watching parts of it last night. And I forgot how brutal the, the food food companies are, and the, there's like three or four major food companies that control all the processing of meats and, and foods that you get. And it was interesting, they were talking about McDonald's. McDonald's is the number one buyer of, of, of beef. Okay, so they control what you're getting. So in order for them to feed you that, they need cows that are really fat, okay? And the thing is, when you feed a, a, a cow naturally, it eats grass. Their stomachs are made. Their stomachs are made to break down. Their stomachs are made to break down the grass in their four chambers. They have four chambers, four chamber stomachs, and, and it's made to break down. When they get the gas, and when they get the um, when they get the grains that make them fat, what happens is they start to bloat and they get really fat. Okay. Well, guess what? When we eat a lot of grains, what happens to us? Same thing. Okay. And more so in men than men than women, guys get gas. Okay, I mean, let's be honest, and that's right. That's from that could be from the grains. Well, you know what they do with the cows because of the grains and how much gas they get? They stick a tube in their butt to get rid of the gas. Okay, that's not natural. Okay, and what happens is those meats that you're eating from those cows, okay, are not healthy for you because they're made, they're artificially made to get larger with grains and things of that nature. So, so the problem, the problem is a yes. With the cows, don't they like put a hole like, in the side, on the inner side of where their stomach is, and so they can take out sometimes the grain and whatever? Yeah, sometimes they, they do. Can't pass through. Yeah, if it doesn't pass through, isn't that gross? <laughs> okay, and these are the animals that we eat. So if they're unhealthy, and this is what they're doing to them, how do you think it could be healthy for us? So from a heart healthy standpoint, you have to look at the meats that you're eating. You have to be aware. Buying local is always the key. If you can find people that are local, it's, it may be, quote unquote, a little more expensive, okay, but it's really not in the long run because if you have a heart problem, it's going to be a major, major, major problem. Okay, natural meats, natural game, things of that nature are higher, um, are higher in omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids also come, most people think of fish oils when they think of omega-3 fatty acids, but they're in natural game and, and natural grass-fed cows too the way they were supposed to be. And omega-3 fatty acids, guess what they do for your system? They are, they found so many good things about it. They thin your blood, they help to coat, they, they're part of the, um, the neurology of your body, so they help to form the cell membranes, okay? And they help, they're anti-inflammatory. So that's one of the things, that, that, that one of the things you have to look at. Omega-3 fatty acids are absolutely necessary, and you can get them from your foods. Farm-raised fish is horrible. They have farm-raised fish too. The only one that's really not bad is tilapia because for some reason the way it's the way it, it, it grows and is it's not as bad as like a salmon that's farm-raised. But if it, if you've ever has it, does any do people like salmon here? Who likes salmon? Okay. So have you ever tasted a piece of wild salmon and one that's farm-raised? Have you ever tasted the difference? There is a huge huge difference. I mean, you could, and if you have them side by side, you can really taste it, but if you start getting accustomed to eating wild caught, like Alaskan salmon or salmon that's not farm raised, and then you go to eat a piece of salmon that's like in, and it's better than eating some of the other stuff that they have in like a TGIF or wherever it is, or a 99, okay, that salmon doesn't have the taste, it doesn't have the texture or richness to it. It's the same with, with, with farm raised animals that are grass fed and and, thing, and things like um, you know lamb and and uh, and pork and anything. Okay, so yes, if you get good pork and good bacon, it can actually be good for you. Okay, it actually can be good for you because the the fallacy is that these fats cause 
your cholesterol to go up, and then cholesterol supposedly causes supposedly causes heart problems. It does not. Okay, cholesterol naturally goes up in our bodies as we get older to help protect our brain and brain uh, brain barrier, blood brain barrier, and also helps to protect the nervous system. Okay, and what happens is cholesterol has gotten a bad name for it. The problem is that we're sedentary that we don't move around. So cholesterol is, is, is the bad guy, but, you know, I mean, I, I'll, I'll read this to you. It was interesting because I was reading this the other day. And um, in 2001, the National Cholesterol Education Program created new guidelines regarding what was to be considered normal levels of cholesterol. Overnight, the number of Americans that were deemed to require cholesterol medication or statin drugs jumped from 13 million to 36 million. Tripled. Just by changing what the... The, what, what it was. Okay, um, I do a class, another class about what doctors talk, um, what doctors know and don't talk about, and I talk more in detail about some of these uh, things. But um, as Dr. John Abramson, clinical instructor at Harvard Medical School, points out in this book, Overdosed America, The Broken Promise of American Medicine, eight of the nine members of the guidelines panel had financial ties to the makers of cholesterol lowering drugs. Yeah, wow, I was right. Wow, I was right. So I'm not bad man. These are actual facts. I mean, these. I mean, I can get the guy. Um, I can get all the stuff that all the stuff that this comes from because this guy really researches his stuff. I love this guy. Guidelines cited only six studies to support their new recommendations. Five of the six studies were not prevention studies. The one prevention study that was cited was not statistically significant. In other words, there's no scientifically valid evidence to support the guidelines. They yell and scream about stuff, and they say, you don't have any proof. But yet they change the things, and then they don't teach you how to take care of yourself and eat properly. That's wrong, any way you put it. And that's why when I first started, I said to you guys, I said to you guys regardless of, of, uh, of what's going on, there are certain things that are good for you. We are supposed to, we are supposed to have certain amounts of nutrients in our bodies and omega-3 fatty acids are important in our bodies. Okay, and regardless of how you, you look at it, you need it. If you're taking a statin drug, there's a lot of side effects. If you're taking, or effects as I call them, if you're taking a blood pressure medication or a heart drug medication, um, they don't tell you that you have to, you have to replace um, one of the cofactors that's in the electron transport chain called CoQ10. CoQ10 is an important process in helping build the energy or um, it helps to create it helps to create ATP which is comes out of the mitochondria okay the electron transport chain is actually five components CoQ10 is one of those components ATP or adenosine triphosphate is what drives our muscles is the energy mitochondria is the powerhouse that creates that stuff and what happens is these medications they diminish the CoQ10 so you need to be taking that stuff Okay, just congruency is, is, is a big one. Um, so those are important factors. So looking at low, for, uh, low fat protein sources, you have things like fish, um, you know, uh, lean meats, poultry and fish, uh, low fat dairy products. I'm not a big fan of dairy products, but we'll, we can have a discussion about that at another time. Um, egg, um, I don't use egg whites, I actually use the full egg because I think the yolk is an important aspect of what you need because a lot of the proteins are in there. As long as you're not abusing anything and eating, you know, I eat three eggs every morning. Okay, and, um, and the reason is because I know it's a good protein source and it's a low calorie protein source. It's only 70 to 90 calories an egg. Okay, and then I may have a piece of toast or something, but I don't eat a lot of, of bread or sugar. So, um, yeah, and fried chicken patties, you don't want that. Um, you don't want, so omega-3 fatty acids, this is what I was talking about, come from cold fish such as salmon, mackerel, and herring. Um, other sources of uh, omega-3 fatty acids are flaxseed, walnuts, soybeans, and canola oil. Um, I wouldn't use canola oil or soybean as much. I would, I would stick with the flaxseed and the walnuts. Um, but again, this is a different type of omega-3 fatty acid. It's an ALA as opposed to EPA, DHA. They're different types. Okay, um, and our bodies are not made to produce those, those the other types from flaxseed, so you have to be aware of what's going on there. Um, legumes, beans, peas, and lentils. Good source of protein and contain less fat uh, for obvious reasons. Um, not a big fan, again, of soy because they're starting to overprocess soy now, too. And, it's, um, and so you've got to be careful of, uh, careful of those things because of, of, of what's going on. Plan ahead. 
I think this is the biggest problem that we have. You know? Oh, it's so hard to make sure that you have the proper foods. Make it the night before. Stick it in a cooler, you know, and then just carry it with you. It's not that it's hard, it's different. Right? It's a lot easier to drive into the drive into the McDonald's or the Dunkin' Donuts or whatever, Wendy's or Burger King, and just order something. But literally, if you think about it, it takes you just as much time to pull off, go in, wait online, order your food, get the food, than it does to sit at home, cut up some carrots or some healthy snack or something, or some healthy food. It takes you about five, ten minutes to do that. You've got to cook the food, obviously. But after it's cooked, you just put it in, you know, prepare it on a Sunday. You know, and then, you know, and then this way you have stuff that you can take with you all week. So this is, the preparation is really, is really about what you want to do to change. Because changing is the big, because it's easy, because we've become the, you know, like, hey, just give it to me, I'll take it, it's really easy. And, you know, and they don't want to pay, you know, like, I love going to Live Juice, which is a place downtown. Um, salads are a little more expensive, but you know what? I'm worth it. Are you? You know? I mean, I'm going to pay just as much for that salad as I am for the burger, and it's healthier, and I can get chicken and stuff on it. I'm getting everything that I need. So... Plan ahead if you know you're going somewhere, if you know something, at least know what's around you. So if you do go out, you can get healthy choices. Okay? Um, these are some of the things, I'm sorry it's small, I was trying to make it bigger, but uh, fruits and vegetables to choose, fresh or frozen vegetables and fruits, low sodium canned vegetables, or canned fruit packed in juice or water. This is a way to start. The best thing to do is get it fresh. Okay, join some of the local co-op type things that have them. Like I know during the summer they have, um, they have uh, you, can buy, you can buy the stuff um, and you get it in bulk. You, you, you know, you pay a membership um, and it's, I think it's called Mofa or something like that. Yeah, My wife does. Deliveries. Yeah, you get deliveries, you get the stuff like that. Um, fruits and vegetables to enjoy, uh, avoid. Now, this is important to understand. Coconut is one of the things that we should be taking on a consistent basis. Okay, because, the, because they are finding there's a lot of antioxidant effects. Okay, what, what happens with the coconut in here when I was pulling this up and I was reading through this is that you're talking about the processed coconut, the shaved coconut that you get that's processed. It's very sweet. If you've ever tasted coconut, it is not really sweet. Okay, it is not really sweet. And coconut oil, I actually, um, in the morning, if I'm, I'm drinking, I like coffee, um, I will sometimes take a spoonful, a teaspoonful or a tablespoonful of coconut Put it in my coffee and blend it. The and it, oil? The oil. Coconut oil? Yeah, the coconut oil. And if you blend it, like in a, in a, in a smoothie cup, you know, mm -hmm. like a, a ninja or something like that, it comes out frothy. It comes out almost like a latte. It tastes great. Okay, that's about the only thing. Yeah, it tastes really good. You should try it. Okay, I, I don't put any sugar or anything. And, it tastes, and it's really healthy and it gives you energy because of the, because of the types of fats it is. So this, this here, um, the site that I got this, there's some things I agree with and I don't. But the research is showing that coconut is actually good for you. Um, vegetables with creamy sauces, fried or breaded vegetables. Everybody likes fried, uh, fried, uh, what is it? The, the string beans, fried string beans. That's popular. Fried pickles, green fried tomatoes. Um, canned fruit packed in heavy syrup. We can get you some fried butter. They do that downtown. Um, frozen fruit with sugar. They do, they do that downtown. Of course. Um, fats to choose. Olive oil, again, I'm not a big fan of canola oil, but um, and uh, margarine that doesn't have trans fats. Again, um, you have to be careful of what it is. Um, what it is. Um, these here, Promise, Active, or Smart. Smart Balance is the only one that I would recommend on this on this chart, okay? Because it's it's it, of the way it's made, okay? Um, Fats to limit, obviously butter, lard, bacon, fat, gravy. You, like bacon is good, but if you're cooking it over a grill and it's dripping off the fat, it's not that bad, you know? So uh, non-dairy creamers, hydrogenated margarines, cocoa butter, um, and coconut. And again, the coconut here um, is something that, the, it's the type of coconut that they're talking about. Again, it comes up to that. Um, type of fats and saturated, they're talking about 2,000 calorie a day diet. Who, eat, who here eats 2,000 calories a day? Does anybody know? You do. Do you keep track of it? I have a good idea. I have it in the past. Okay. You have a... 
I sat down, I, I keep track of my stuff on, on my fitness pal, okay? And I do it every day. And I, and I do it every day. On Saturday, it was my bad day. You know, so my, my family and I sat down and we bought some chips and salsa and things. And salsa, and a couple of beers, yeah. Um, salsa, uh, victory stout. Um, but salsa is actually, if you're going to eat something, salsa is very low in calories. And it's really good for you, okay. Um, but, you know, we had some stuff. So by the time I got to dinner, I had eaten already 2,000 calories. I eat 2,000 calories at lunch, okay. I mean, I, that's, I mean, that's how much, I, I can eat that much at lunch. By the time I got done drinking my beer and having my treats and going through everything, 6,000 calories. 6,000 calories. I was sitting there looking at it and I'm like, oh, I better get on the bike for an extra half an hour tomorrow. <laughs> you know, I mean, because it sort of looks at it. But the thing is, I don't do that all the time. You know, it's periodically when you boost up that way, it actually speeds up your metabolism because your body's trying to break it down. Okay, but if you continue to eat that way, then your body just can't do it. Okay, but the, but the thing is, most people try it. Really keep track of the number of calories you eat and see if you're eating just 2,000 calories. I guarantee you, you're not. Okay, uh, Tyler's laughing at me again. Yeah. You, I use the MyFitnessPal and it's great because you can scan everything in. Yeah, 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 that's what's great about it. You, 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 if you have a smartphone, uh, you want to add a food and you just click it. You can click the barcode and you can actually click and scan the barcode from the food you're eating right into it, and I'll tell you the number of service. And it's amazing how, how realistic it is. Portion control is the key here. All the other foods, you can eat healthy, but if you are eating, if you are eating healthy and eating lots, you're still going to have problems because you're going to put stress on your body. Okay? So there are good foods that you can eat. There are, you know, the fruits and vegetables, obviously, everybody knows that. But portion control is the key. And MyFitnessPal is great because it's easy, it's free, and you don't have to pay Weight Watchers or whatever it is, okay? And you just, you put the foods in. And it's, it's, it really takes a few minutes. And you know what, if you don't remember, you write down what you ate, and then later on you go back and you put it in. I mean, and, it's, and it really does, it, it really is eye-opening to what's, that, what's going on. So before you do anything else for your heart, Look at the number of calories and caloric intake and your activity level. Then from there, you can start tailoring the foods that you eat based on what your activity levels and what you do. Because I know Tyler works out heavy, so what you're going to need for nutrition is going to be different than what I'm going to need because I'm doing more endurance type stuff. Okay, um, someone who's sedentary or sitting is not going to need those types of things. They need different types of foods. Okay, so you have to look, you have to look at that. But portion control is the key to starting it. Okay, and then from there you can start looking at the foods, but always make sure that you're adding fruits or vegetables to your diet, because that will be the key factor to helping the body absorb that stuff. Okay, and the other thing is making sure that you're getting omega-3 fatty acids from good protein sources. Okay, you have to you have to look at you have to look at those things. Those are the key fa those are the key factors. There is so much involved with this that I could go on for mm -hmm. literally a whole weekend. But I'm hoping that you get the small nuggets that will help you to understand what you what you want or what you need to do, because the small nuggets and starting a piece at a time is where you start. In November, I started using my fitness pal again and got back on my training schedule for my triathlons. When I started, um, when I started around Thanksgiving, I was 255, 256 pounds. Okay, as of yesterday, I was 239. And I did nothing really dramatic, but just keep track of my food and make sure that I was eating healthy foods. And I don't always. I do go get the occasional burger. I do go get the, you know, I do, but I don't do it on a steady basis. And my wife is a nutrition course. So, uh, so I thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions about something specific, I will hang around. Okay, I will hang around for a few minutes. Um, but other, other than that, I really, really thank you. Make sure that you start with the, the foundation of nutrition and then look at the, the hierarchy of what's going on. You got to make sure your nutrition is set. You got to make, sure, make sure that you have enough water. You have to make sure that you have good breathing air that's not toxic. And you have to make sure on the top of that pinnacle of that is make sure that the nerve supply is allowing your body and brain to communicate.
Okay, and that's what the safety pit cycle is about. If you ask um, for the workshop we're doing at the, um, at the beginning of next month, and next week Dr. Jenner will be doing uh, joint repair, joint repair biomechanics. by mechanics, right? So these are big, important aspects, but a little bit at a time. Thank you very, very much. If you know anybody, ask them to come. Can I just ask for sure. How much water